Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our monthly Zoom meeting. Today, the topic is art of seeing, and I mean is seeing as an artist would see things. I will be showing images and ask you to maybe analyze that. And please don't switch off your microphones. I'm happy to hear you talking. Yet, if I hear someone's background noise, I will mute this person to keep everybody uh, focused. So here is the image I'd like to start with, which I had as a title, but let's move forward because these two images are taken to represent someone who is guided by eyes. And the other one, is by someone who is guided by something else, but not just eyes. I will put it also at the end, and we'll discuss what this other person is guided with at the end. So one person guided by eyes, the other by something else. I don't know yet. And here I wanted to share a photograph I took here in Georgia. And I think it's not just like beautiful or not beautiful. It's a nice combination of colors. So it's red and greenish, which together look okay. They're not beautiful, but just okay. And that one also I took, I don't know, some weeks ago. And also the colors we look at are natural, nothing really specific. And our eye, I can even say relaxes. Yeah, it feels comfortable looking at these things and even this one remembering it's done by some human being so he has some construction on top yet the flowers and the construction together don't bring any specific feelings so they are they're nice they're good they don't feel negative for them because it was made by someone who was using eyes and not trying to disturb our vision. And in this case, we'll start seeing something more interesting. It's a picture I've taken in the yard of an artist. And I just walked through the yard and took it. I guess you understand it's an artwork just because of the way components of this image are set together. How this blue, place with this lilac, purple, and grayish color and everything. So components are simple, but the way we put them together make it meaningful and pleasing at the same time. So it is already an artwork because it talks to our eyes some thoughtful way. And the other images I'm showing you was created by a local artist, Nino, who is our friend and who works with textiles. She applies pieces of one type of fabric on top of the other. Yeah, you see it as application. And here is herself with her, well, no, this is another work of hers. And here is herself with her work. And I just wanted to ask everybody, if you don't mind answering, how can we say this image is done by an artist or not? So would there be any consideration of yours? Can we say like this is an artist's work or not? If we don't know this person, if we just see it out of the blue somewhere in the street, walking in the street and seeing it or I don't know. So how would you say it's an artist or not? Any thoughts, Mary, on this? Um, for me, the, the way the, um, the colors and the forms are placed carefully and with the meaning, it's for me, it's obviously an artist who did that image. Mm -hmm. Yes, colors and forms are organized in a certain way. Okay. Not sure Yara would wish to participate if you would 
you just unmute yourself and start speaking. Yes. Okay. And we just slowly move on. If you don't mind, thank you, Mary. Thank you. And now I'll show you this piece, which is some medieval embroidery from church. And I guess here we can also speak about possibility of this made by an artist or not an artist. And many, very often we see contemporary things which do not appeal to our eyes, that are not talking to us. But in this case, I guess the colors, how they're connected, the shapes, the proportions, we can definitely say that was done by an artist because it's talking to our eyes. And about this one, it's a little, I would say probably a little less than 10 inches high thing. And book illustration, I think this was also an artist because we can see how the colors and composition are put together. So this person is thinking how to put blue the X to the red, how the yellow to be combined with the blue and other things, even though it's a provincial thing. Yes, this artist doesn't show all the details, doesn't depict every anatomical feature, but it, it shows in, in a good way everything. So we think it's an artist. And then I suggest we have a look at the next one, which will be mine. I did this, I was painting an icon, but the way it is done now demonstrates that the red color is too strong. So the image was made by some brush and hand and composition, not too bad, but this red color is not good. So if I saw this somewhere, I would say this artist is probably not a good artist or not an artist because this artist allows this red to be so bad. And I did notice it and I changed it. So at the end, red is not so terrible. But I mean, the difference is very subtle. It's your decision if you want to torture your beholder, if you want to make somebody feel pain after seeing things, or you just say, okay, I want to communicate visually, I want to talk to you, I want to show you something. And it's a process. I wanted in the beginning, emphasize the churches of Christ, but looks like I was rather torturing the beholders, which was not good at all. And I muted the red. Now I think we can move forward and I want to show you them together. Like one of them in bright color and the other one is slightly more muted. Okay, we move forward again and I'm showing you several old icons which will all be different, but I guess in every case we still think it was a process of creation, process of building the image and to think of how like, this blue would be working with this green. How this very strange but very interesting movement of the arm is working together, like the arm is parallel to the garment and the hand is also parallel to this part of the garment. So all together, it shows the movement towards the face. Yes, it indicates our eye to move over the face. And there are many other things like this role is kind of embracing the knee. Yes, it's going around the knee. And this one, well, I would say this artist was a humble person, didn't want to use very bright colors because maybe the gold was the brightest part. So he or she tried to combine together this yellowish color with the green color and this is how it works. Let's move forward and this one. I used to see this icon only the top part of it because maybe those who reproduce it feel that the legs so narrow and thin are not good enough. And yet I see this as an integrated message to someone 
who wants to think, who wants to contemplate on the image of John the Baptist. And we'll have several of them, like this one. I think it also is quite a small, but how delicately this artist combines the blueness, greenishness, very muted, and the red. So altogether, we may start analyzing and see the huge head. Yes, the head is huge for such a small figure and teeny tiny shoulders and try to measure up the arm, the hand and a huge head. But we are not bothered by that because this is a specific way to talk to us. This person is talking to us, paying more attention to this part, less attention to that. And he or she is not worrying about these proportions, so we shouldn't either. Or that one, much more complex, with lots and lots of different details. And yet through these details, we are focused. We are called, we are invited to look at the face because this is the most interesting and most, how can I say, well organized thing, yes? I can say the wings are more mechanical. The garments is more formal, but the face is the part which was mostly handmade, mostly modeled as a unique piece. So our eyes have tendency moving toward the face again. It was the work of an artist. And this one, I'd say very provincial, but why not? You may not have an opportunity to attend Fine Art Academy to learn somewhere. And look how he's speaking. He is saying something with every fold. Well, he is moving. His arms are moving, the legs are moving. And I just want to ask you to see how natural is every movement of this person. Yes, he's all the body and everything is in very natural posture. Maybe lack of skills or beautiful performance of the highlights, and yet very natural. And now I wanted to show you this thing because technically we see a lot of work. We see many highlights and shadows and gilded parts, but let's start thinking again from point of view of an artist, whether it is one or not. So did this person try to communicate with us visually? Did this person try to share some visual values with us? I don't know. Can you say he or she did? I doubt. Because I'm wondering why like, we are supposed to look at this blue knee in the very middle. Why is it blue? I don't know. And many other things which show formal perfection and great execution, but no communication at all. So it's not made for communication. It's just performing a certain number of steps. And moving forward here, I would say this guy didn't know much about the construction of the face and look how close are the eyes and there are many things we can criticize him or her for. And yet, see how appealing it is, how much it's really walking towards us, it's seeing us. We feel this image as a silent message talking to the beholder. Everything is made not to show the skill, but to talk to you, to invite you to the image to be in communication. Let's compare it again with this guy who did a lot, who did really hundreds and hundreds of brush strokes. But the question is, why were these brush strokes made? Were they made to be enjoyed by the viewer or not? Were they made for the beholder to be invited for communication? I'm afraid not. It's just demonstration of skills. Or here, the same situation. The one on the left is more provincial. The one on the right is contemporary and showing much more skills. And yet, 
how complex and interesting and inviting is the one with the yellow background and yellow garment. And the modern one is much more mechanical. Like, okay, I'm supposed to draw this highlight, this line, this garment, I do it. And my client should be paying me. But do our eye have anything for appreciation this image? I'm, I'm not certain. I feel it's just boring and even difficult to look at because I'm not considered as a viewer. Here, it probably in real life should be a little lighter. And yet we see what connection are the different parts of the image, like how the greenishness of this garment muted greenishness is resembled or answered by the brightness and clarity of this fur on the edge of the garment and how they all have this juxtaposition with the body color, yes, with the skin tone. So it's just a way to communicate with us. It's just a way to write this story so we'd have some interest reading it so we'd be thrilled to know how parts are connected together. And what will you tell me about this one? Anybody say anything? Or Yara, this time I will read your message if you like. I just wasn't sure if you wrote me something. So what do you think about that image? Mary, would be, you say something? It's a contemporary one. And how you analyze it, whether it's an artist's work or not, and how you support your opinion. If you like to say it. Sorry, there is, uh, I think there is some um, time in between the thing you say and the thing I see, so it's difficult for me. Okay, well, the question is still the same. What do you think about this image from John the Baptist? Can you say it's an artist's work or not, and why? Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, the thing is, it's always complicated to balance in between the technical skills. Sometimes the technical skills are really, really high and in the emotion it gives to the viewer, it's not so interesting. And sometimes the technical skills are not so good, but the emotion we get from looking at the picture is very intense. And this one for me maybe makes the good balance in between both of them. Yes, yes, I'm with you. And what you said about emotion, I can say probably rather mm, appealing to you, like talking to you, not just emotion. Because for me, it's a matter of making decisions. I can make decisions in favor of your eyes on in favor of demonstrating my perfect skills. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a choice what I choose. And in this case, the person was talking to our eyes. Look how delicate is this brownish garment. Yes, very, very soft. And the gold is not bothering too. So everything is well fit. It's really talking to us. Yes, I'm with yeah. you. I agree. It is a work of art. And this model was used as prototype for many icons. And now we are going to see several of them because it really is a famous one. Well, it's similar to the one we saw before. And we can analyze how different these icons are, even though they both, of course, are works of artists. Like maybe the older one 
on our left hand side is more classical, more proportionate, and the one on the right is more expressive. Yes, very long shoulder on one side, very short shoulder on the other side, and the head has a very long neck. So altogether strange things, but this strangeness gives a very specific approach to this image. We are stopped by looking at him at seeing how weird, how strange is he. And then we are invited to watch, to look longer. But looking at the mo images which were painted after this model, we sometimes may be surprised how different people were trying to reproduce this image, but they never thought of how these details would be functioning visually. Like, let's take the one with the red garment. Yes, the second one. What can we say? The red color in itself, yes, the red itself is okay, but it's too strong. And I know, I don't know, should I look at the face or should I look at the garment? Again, too much highlight on the body, on the arm, and everywhere, not face. So many details distracting me. Or on this second one with white background. Why is it white? Why should I be looking at white folds here if they are not connected to nothing in this image? So for me, this can be compared to writing a book. So you have a story where, I don't know, your hero is walking on the street and then immediately this hero is on a beach and five minutes later again walking in the street why would that event with the beach was important i don't know so the similar thing is here when we are thinking of a process of building an image we are suggested to look at models to see how they work, when we make our choice to think of how our image will work in, in our individual way. And this is moment when we choose something. And I will be showing you some of my mistakes just to demonstrate how things function on my end, because I used to struggle with my own process and the matter is, I'm always glad in the beginning, but at a certain point, I discover my work to become much more formal. Like I start drawing and I continue, I, it's okay. It's looking at me, it's alive, it's appealing. Well, you can erase some, some, sometimes, but yeah, it's something working as a visual image. Yes, I guess. Like by now, it's a work of an artist who is appreciating the brownish part, the drawing, everything. Everything is talking to me in here. And here, no more, because there are too many details which were done formally. Like supposed to make highlights, here is the highlight. But if we compare them together, they're no more so good. Like this one is alive, is looking at me, is appealing, and this one is, this second one, is just executed, just done for someone who wants to see, but not talking to me anymore. And here I'm showing you two different images in process of drawing, again, the one on the left, you see the eyes, you see the nose, lips, just very little bit, but already it starts talking to me. There is some expression in it. Yes, with little, very few details, 
we start seeing it because it's meant to be seen. Yes, the one who did it was thinking how we will see it. And the one on the right, lots and lots and lots of details, but it no more is talking to us. It's, it's gone. It's overworked. It's too much information, So, but we lost the main part. And I will show you like next three, four images, and that will be the, the end, not too many today. So this is a medieval fresco in Cyprus, and this is a contemporary image. So looking at the one on the left, I see it was made by someone who was enjoying the process, who was loving these colors and everything. It's a story where you have unexpected details like red background for the medallion and many colors which are more blended. So altogether is a good story. And the image on the right where everything is crying at me, all these colors, all these uh, broken lines, they give the feeling of excessive amount of information and really very high level of attention requiring and while there is nothing to look at. So did this person think of how I will be tortured by this bluishness or not? I guess it's really a torturing color. And this not only happens to some beginning artists, it also happens with artists with a huge experience and there are famous ones. Like in Russia, there is such a famous iconographer, Father Zinon, and he took this, the same image, yes, in the model, and he painted his version of it. But when I look at this image, I see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different details. I see how separately he has painted these little I don't know, highlight here and there, but I do not see the integrity I used to see in the model. So we see demonstration of many specific skills, but it's no more a story. The one on the left is a story told me by an artist. And the one on the right is not a story. It just having many words said and at the end, not really showing me anything. So that's it. It depends on your goals. It depends on what you want to achieve. You want to show how good are your skills, then you get there. You want to talk to someone who is willing to play with your icon, you'll be able to do it if you think of how you deliver the information, how to build it. And I see the message from Yara, and it's a very good message, thank you. So I will only read the last question. Is it bad to show the good skills? And again, my question is this, what is the purpose? Because in this case, when I see the old ancient medieval image, call it however we want, it only creates for me and for have whoever enters this church a space for prayer. Yes, the purpose of an icon or fresco in this case is to create a message, a place, an environment where you would feel welcomed, you would feel peaceful enough to pray. Yes, you would feel comfortable in presence of this message. Like in your room, if you paint your walls in white, it's neutral. But if you paint your walls in red color, that will not be much comfortable to stay in this environment. The same thing is about contemporary iconography, which very often is demonstrating how, how many steps were performed to achieve the result, but the result is very different from what the predecessors did. So this is the problem, yes? We do, we make all these efforts to achieve the result, which is what? Create a tool for prayer. But 
making all these efforts, we forget that we need to constrain ourselves. We need to arrive not to the summary of details, not to number of highlights and shadows, but to a specific image which will invite or welcome your prayer. This is it. So your skills are yours. They're not supposed to be shown to everybody. They're supposed to work, to be put at work to produce something where nobody will notice that. So if your product, your final image is good, how, why bother whether you had skills or not? Of course, there are many different situations where you probably have to work for a little countryside chapel where your image can be very simple. And sometimes you're asked to make an icon for some huge cathedral and the image probably should not be very simple because it will be seen in a very complex environment. Yes, there has to be connection between the environment and the way you work. And yet the complex environment should not feel your ability to work creatively. And I think I, we should probably return to a couple of images I was showing. I just want to stop sharing for a moment. I will, in my program, move backwards and put these two on the screen. Yes, I'd rather show you these colors on the screen. So I can say that the artist who did the image on the left was also showing a lot of skills. Yes, you see how many beautiful highlights on the wings and everything. And I can even say he or she worked a lot more than the guy who produced the mosaic on the right. Yeah, there's so much little, so many little things. And yeah, this person was able to constrain the desire to show so many details to sub subordinate this desire to do so much work to the very final result. To what? To make an expressive face, to create image peaceful and inviting for prayer. So lots of skills we see, we see them. They're just not popping up too much. They're not trying to gain all our attention. They are more humbly existing somewhere we will see them if we want to. And of course, when we stay in a church or at home, we are not praying, our eyes cannot always be focused on the face. And yet, being distracted, so our eye would wander around the image, we of course can see secondary details. Why not? But they have to be done in such a way that our eye would want to return to the eyes, to the face, not to stay somewhere enjoying how the folds are done. Folds are secondary. We can see them, notice them, but always return to the face to really stay focused in prayer. That's the work of an artist. And that's what I guess in this case, oh, sorry, I should make it smaller. The artist on the right did not achieve. The artist has demonstrated a lot, a lot of different highlights and shadows, but if I would have to choose image for prayer, I definitely choose the one which is more peaceful, which has more quiet, I don't know, expression? No, more quiet environment, which creates more quiet place and space for me for the prayer. This is it. Thank you.